Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions, and in today's video, we're taking a look at boundaries and regions within AutoCAD, what they are, what the difference is, and how you can use them. If you guys like this video or any of my videos, make sure you sign up for the free CAD Intentions newsletter. I'll put a link to it up above and down below. I send out weekly tips, tricks, and all the new videos. You're not going to want to miss it. Plus, you get a bunch of cool bonuses and free stuff for signing up. All right, let's jump into today's video. All right, so today's video comes from a community member, uh, the CAD support community group, which you can see more details about in the description. But the question was, what is the difference between regions and boundaries and how are they used and what are they for? So today's video, we're gonna be walking through a little bit about each and how you could use them in a typical situation. So to start, the differences between a boundary and a region uh, are pretty simple. So to start, the region command is going to combine or join multiple objects into a single object, closing the object, basically creating a closed polygon or closed object out of multiple single pieces. And the boundary command we'll look at a little bit later, but it's going to create a new entity based on multiple objects and the area uh, within them. So to create a region, you can type in the region command and hit enter, and it's going to ask you to select multiple objects. So here I've got a bunch of single line objects. If I select all of these, it's simply going to convert them into a connected single object, which is called a region. Now, this is slightly different than a polyline that is connected into, say, a polygon. Uh, regions have a lot of the same options, but if you're doing 3D work, a region is going to work a little bit better with some of the, uh, say, extrude and union and boundary commands uh, within the 3D modeling. It's also going to give you some geometry that you may not get with just a polyline, things like the perimeter area, and you can also pull centroids and other information like that from your regions. Now we're going to take a look at another example of a region here. You can see these irregular weird shapes here are all different lines connected. Now regions are also going to work with a spline, which is a unique thing compared to say P line edit, because that's not going to be able to include a spline. Uh, right there. So we're just going to connect this, hit enter. So now we've created a spline as well as we have all of our individual lines here. If we type in region and hit enter again, we can join all of these by selecting them and hitting enter. And you'll see that it has now all been added in to a region and it's going to calculate that area for you, which can save you a ton of time when you're dealing with irregular shapes or a bunch of different objects and you just wanna figure out a quick area or a calculation from it. Or like I said, if you're gonna be doing some 3D modeling, you can now extrude this and model from it, even though it's a collection of odd objects. Now, next, the boundary command, as I mentioned, is similar but different. Boundary is going to create an object out of the boundary of an area that you click or select within. Now, to activate it, you can type in the boundary command. And in our case here, we're going to try and create an object that is the from the inside or the boundary of all of these rooms in this floor plan. So I'm going to type in boundary and hit enter and you're going to get the boundary creation dialog box. Now between the two, I tend to think that boundary is a little more useful. Again, I typically will use polylines, polygons rather than regions, but they both have their place, especially like I mentioned, if you're doing some 3D work. Now within the boundary creation dialog box here, you have a few checkboxes whether or, want, or not you want to uh, detect islands within your boundary. So that would be if there's an object in the middle of this room, whether you want it to create that as part of your boundary, uh, as in an existing or extra uh, polyline object, or if you want to ignore things within the boundary. And you'll see what I mean in a second. You can also choose if you would like to create the boundary as a region or a polyline. I'm going to use polyline here, and then we're going to hit OK. It's going to ask you to pick an internal point of your boundary. So if I just click within my floor, you can see it has highlighted the outer boundary of the entire floor plan here. Hitting enter now creates 
that object. So I have, so I'll type M for move and enter, and I now have a boundary object that is all of the area within my floor plan. So I could do a quick now area calculation because I have a closed polyline, or you could convert this or create a region from the start. But this is the difference between the two. A boundary isn't necessarily an object, it's the command to create a new object, whether it's a polyline or a region, and a region is a type of object within AutoCAD. Now, another cool fact or feature of the boundary command is that it doesn't affect the existing line work. So you can see all of the old wall line work is still within my uh, drawing area here. A boundary uh, command will create new line work, whereas a region command will convert your existing line work into the closed region. So it's deleting all of those individual line pieces. You can always explode it to get them back. So if I select that region, type explode and hit enter, you're gonna get all of your individual lines back. But that is one difference between the two as well. You're gonna keep everything when you're using the boundary command and get a new object. Region is going to convert your objects into a closed polygon or a region. Now, before I jump into the last tip here, uh, again, if you guys haven't checked it out already, I have a weekly AutoCAD newsletter uh, on the CAD Intentions website. I'm going to put the link up above and down below. It's free to join, and I hope to see you guys there. I send out weekly tips, tricks, and, of course, information about the videos, and you get a bunch of free downloads and information along the way. All right, so jumping back in, uh, you can also use the boundary command to create shapes of irregular objects quickly. So we're going to type in the boundary command here. And what we're going to get is we're going to get a boundary that kind of follows the inside of all these objects and ignores this island here in the middle. So we're going to leave all the settings here again and we're going to hit OK. And we're going to click on the inside. And now you can see I've quickly made this irregular shape and it's created a nice polygon for me. Now I've got the polyline here selected. I can move it and you can see it's made this weird shape based on all of the circles that have got drawn in here and it's ignored uh, this internal island here. But now I can get the area of this. I can move it around. Uh, you can trim and use more objects to create an even more unique uh, boundary. You can do the boundary command again here, pick a new internal point and you're going to get an even smaller area here. So you can see boundary makes it easy to create objects from an internal uh, space, uh, saving you a bunch of time if you're sketching, drawing, uh, or needing to create irregular shapes quickly. Uh, it's a lot quicker than using the trim command to do this kind of thing, especially if you have a bunch of equal circles. You could use, say, circular array to wrap them around then use the boundary command to create that internal polygon. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Cheers.